Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee. You can see my name right there, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing The Hod King by Josiah Bancroft, book number two, three, no, book number three in his Towers of Babel series. Book number one was, of course, Sendlin Ascends. Book number two is Arm of the Sphinx. Now we're at book number three, The Hod King. Let's first talk about the covers and the graphic design. You know, I love cover illustration and graphic design, and so we always talk about that first. Love the um, illustration, the overall packaging, it's dynamite. We've got a great map in here of the Tower of Babel. Not only that, but each of the books fits together nicely as a package, as a complete package. And uh, book number four is going to come out, and I hope that they make it all match, because these all look dynamite on the shelf. Bravo for that. Not only that, but these were self-published first. I mean, I don't buy a lot of self-published stuff. Um, but these were self-published first, and uh, now then they were picked up by Orbit Books. And the uh, Orbit Books made the correct choice to use the illustrations that were on the self-published. Because I think that if the story, if I know the story, it's Josiah Bancroft, his friend, was an illustrator, and his friend illustrated all of these covers. And these covers are dope. I think they do the book and the story and the mood of everything that's in the story justice. So thumbs up for the graphic design and the covers. Yay. Let's get to the story. I've got a review of the first two books on my channel. I mean, I read these things because they are unique. These things are out of the, these things are out of sight. These are way different than anything else you're ever going to read. It's a story about Senlin and his wife Maria who go to visit the Tower of Babel. It's this big, huge thing like a bucket list event for the people that live in this world. And the Tower of Babel is this, this big tower that uh, that is kind of got a map here, and it's got different levels to it, and it's so tall, nobody has seen the top of it. And it's so wide around that, I mean, it's just huge. I mean, there's there's flying pirate ships that dock on every level of this thing, and it's just it's a... It's like a clockwork, funhouse, steampunk version of your Bible story, Tower of Babel. That's the best way to describe it. And this feels like, when you're reading this, it feels like a timeless classic. Like, this story has existed forever, and it's like Josiah Bancroft was the one that pulled it from the, pulled it from the ether and put it into words. It's a real work of art and fantasy literature. It, it just, it stands on its own as just a unique piece of, Book writing, novel writing, uh, storytelling, all of that. Now let's recap. Book one is they go to the Tower of Babel, Babel and um, Mari immediately gets lost in the bazaar. Like they don't even get to the tower and she gets lost. There's a bazaar, like a big, huge carnival like bazaar at the base of this uh, tower. She gets lost in that. And then. Senlin has to find his wife, and that's what happens. Senlin goes into the tower to find his lost wife, and that's when the adventure begins, and we get... Each each level of the tower has got a different theme to it. You know, we've got the, uh, the basement, the parlor, the baths, uh, the silk gardens, different things like this. And there's hundreds of them, and there's hundreds of them. And, and so he makes his way through these things... In these first two books, a lot of different adventures. He starts out kind of as a simp, like a kind of a guy that gets walked on a lot. Maybe you can kind of tell that maybe his wife walked on him and, and maybe she wore the pants in the family. And then as he, in book two, he gains a little more confidence. He becomes a pirate and uh, he gets a crew of kind of rogues that kind of adventure with him. And they're also invested in finding his wife. And then we come to book three. We come to book three. And now... The story kind of goes in like three different directions. We've got three people that tell kind of the story, and that's uh, Senland and uh, Valletta and Irene. And they um, are our main people that we see 
the, 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 and, it, and we're on one level. This whole story takes place on one level of the Tower of Babel, and that level is Pelphia. It's sort of a domed city within the Tower of Babel. I mean, there's fake stars up above and a fake moon and sun that sort of moves. And the whole city is just like down. It's like, it's like did you ever read The Devil in the White City by... Um, uh, Stephen Larson or Eric Larson, where everything was in the white city in Chicago, everything was white and pristine and beautiful, and it was just awe inspiring. That's kind of what Pelphia is like, but with this inside the Tower of Babel with the dome ceiling and um, and a gladiator arena, believe it or not. And Sendlin gets involved in the arena, and then Irene and Voletta kind of team up as a, a noble lady, they, they kind of fake their way through the city as a noble lady and a handmaid. And they go in search, they're all kind of in search of Maria. And uh, there's a sphinx that they talk to. There's some people that they run into that tell them, hey, yeah, Maria is this, that, and the other. You might not want to find her. She's gotten remarried to this guy, who this duke, who is maybe not the nicest guy on the planet. Even the duke himself confronts Sendlin at one time and talks, you know, it's kind of like the bad boy talking to the nice guy. He's like, hey, man, I'm the dude, and, and she's my woman now. And uh, Senland is, you know, I mean, he's... And then the the story really belongs to Maria. Book three really... Because we have searched for this mystery figure, Maria, for, um, for m two books we've searched for her. And... Now that we've starting to get hit glimpses that she might show up, now she starts to become the star of the show because she does show up a few times. And when she shows up, those conversations are riveting because we have anticipated seeing things now from her perspective as, as she has been lost in this tower and had her own adventures and gone through her own trials and tribulations ever so much as Senlin, who is searching for her. And now she is sort of married off to this Son of a bitch, for no better way to say it. Um, and then, uh, does she really love him or does she not really love him? And the conversation... So Valletta meets up with her and they, and, and they have a conversation. And then Irene, at the very end, I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, Irene meets up with her at the very end and they have... The, uh, it's just... You're just waiting for those moments where Maria finally gets to speak. And she does. And it's magical. And it's great. Because we have... Not only has Senlin been searching for her for these two and a half books, we, as the readers, have been searching for her too. Hoping, hoping that bad things have not happened to her, and then finding out the things that have happened to her, and just being every bit as heartbroken, disappointed, horrified as Senlin himself is. And then, towards the end of the book, we start to realize, well, who, who's really searching for who at this point? You know, it's like, um, and that's the kind of what I took from the end of it. It's like, it's like, now who is searching for who? And I, I just, dynamite books. Absolutely great books. I love Sentinel and the Send. I love Arm of the Sphinx. I love this one. I think they're all equally as good. I give this a 9.5 out of 10. I think everybody should be reading this series if they just want to read something that's just completely wacky and different and yet exciting and deep and super well-written just, it was just, it was, there's magic on every page.